Hello, welcome to this lesson in Algebra 1. We're going to now conquer kind of the most complicated multiplication you'll have in general when you're multiplying polynomials together. So to set the stage, remember we first started out by multiplying a monomial times something, where we have one term outside the parentheses. Then we talked about multiplying binomials times binomials, where we had two terms times two terms. And now we're going to have a problem like this. And it's easier just to show you rather than tell you. So what if we had a plus 2 and that was going to be multiplied times a squared plus 3a plus 5. Now you see this is not a binomial times binomial like last time. This is a binomial times a trinomial, right? So you have two terms times three terms. And you could have even more complicated problems. You could have two terms times four or five terms here. Or you could have three terms in front and four terms in the second set of parentheses. Well, let me ask you a question. Now that you know how to multiply binomials times binomials, the way I taught you, how do you think you would do this problem, even if you don't know the rules? I mean, algebra, at some point, you should start seeing patterns in how it works, right? Well, um, if you cover up the 5, if the 5 wasn't even there, so there was two terms in here, you already know how to do that. You take a times this and a times that. And then you go here and you do 2 times this and 2 times that. But now you have a third term. So what do you think you do? Well, what you do is you start with this first term multiply this times that term, then a times the 3a, then you have to distribute the a times the 5. So it gets distributed into all three of these terms. Then you move over to 2. You distribute them here, you distribute them here, you distribute them here. And that's, that's the blueprint for how you multiply any two polynomials together. Every term you have on the outside gets multiplied times every term in the second polynomial. Then you move to the next term and you do exactly the same thing. And then you keep doing it until you've multiplied everything together and then you simplify terms. So for this case, for instance, we have a times a squared is going to give you a cubed because we add the exponents together. Now we take the a times the 3a. It's going to give you 3a squared because we add the exponents together. 1 plus 1. Then a times 5 is 5a. So we're done with this guy up here. Now we move and turn our attention to the positive 2 times the a squared gives us 2a squared. Then we take the 2, multiply it times the 3a. So 2 times 3 is 6a. Right? Then we take the 2 and multiply it times the 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So you see how that works? We're just multiplying everything on the outside times everything on the inside. Now we look for like terms. So we have an a cubed. We don't have any more a cubed, so we don't have anything else to add him with, but we do have an a squared, um, and we can add him to that a squared. So let's go ahead and, and mark that down. First we have the a cubed. That didn't change. Then we have 3a squared and 2a squared. 3 plus 2 is 5, so 5a squared. Now we have 5a and 6a. Those are like terms, and together they make 11a. And then we just have one constant. There's no other, there are no other numbers here, so you have plus 10. So the answer is a cubed plus 5a squared plus 11a plus 10. That's the final answer. So now you see why we're naming this section multiplying polynomials. Because here I have two terms times three terms, but I could have two terms times four terms. If I had a fourth term in here, then a would just get distributed to everything, including that fourth term, before I move here, going four terms. Right, so it's the, it's the same general pattern. You can multiply any two polynomials together using this technique. And now you know why I don't really like the idea of teaching FOIL, the word FOIL, because it teaches you to remember those letters rather than what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, which is just distributing these terms in, then you can multiply any two polynomials. You don't have to remember any rules. All right, so the next uh, question is going to be, now, we, now that we know what we're doing, we'll just start cranking along here. What if we have 2x minus 1? times x squared minus x plus 3. So we start here. 2x times x squared gives us 2x cubed, because we add the exponents. And then 2x times negative x, don't forget the negative, is negative 2x squared, because we add those exponents. Then 2x times 3 gives you 6x. Now we're done with distributing this in. Now we look at the negative 1 times the x squared gives you negative x squared. Then we have the negative 1 times the negative x gives you positive x. Negative times negative gives you positive. Then we have the negative 1 times the 3 gives us 
negative 3. Now we look to collect like terms. We don't have any more x cubes anywhere here, so we can't really do anything with that. We just write it down, 2x cubed. We have negative 2x squared and negative 1x squared, which is going to give us negative 3x squared. Then we have positive 6x and positive 1x, which is going to give us positive 7x, and then we have the number negative 3 there. There's nothing left to add him to. So what we have is 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 3. That is the final answer. Right? So once you get the idea, once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. Okay? Let's try another one. Let's say we have 3z minus 2 times 3z squared minus z plus 4. And we want to multiply all this together. So we start with the 3z times 3z squared. 3 times 3 is going to give you 9. z times z squared is going to give you z cubed. We add the exponents. Then we take this times negative z. It's going to give you negative 3z squared. So we add the exponents. Then we take this times positive 4. is going to give you 12. 3 times 4 is 12z. Now we're done with this. Now we turn our attention to negative 2 times 3z squared is going to give you negative uh, 6z squared. And then we have negative 2 times negative z is going to give you positive 2z. Then we have negative 2 times positive 4 is going to give you negative 8, like this. Okay. So now we look at like terms. We don't have any z cubed other than that initial one, so what we have is we write it down 9z cubed. Then we have negative 3z squared, negative 6z squared. We add those together and we get negative 9z squared. Then we have 12z and 2z. We add those together, we get 14z, and then finally we have negative 8. There's nothing to add there. So we get 9z cubed minus 9z squared plus 14z minus 8, that is the final answer. All right, just want to do a couple more to let you get some practice, so we're going to shift up. And by all means, pause the video, see if you can solve them yourself. I mean, that's the whole point, to see if you can, can do it on your own. And none of these problems really are any harder than any of the other ones. It's just that you've got to be careful with the signs and just take your step, take your time step by step. 2y minus 3 times 2 y minus 4 minus y squared. Now the only thing different about this one than some of the other ones is that inside of here, um, normally you want to write a polynomial like this with the highest power in front. So it would be like negative y squared plus 2y minus 4, but this one's written backwards with the y squared at the end. I guess I'm doing it to show you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order of the terms. As long as you're taking this and multiplying it times every term, taking this and multiplying it times every term, then you're going to get the right answer. So 2y times 2y gives you positive 4y. And for, it's not 4y, 4y squared, because we multiply y times y gives us y squared. Then we take this times the next term, not times the negative 4. It's going to give us negative 8y. Then we take this times the last term. Don't forget it's negative y squared, so it's going to be negative 2y uh, to the third power because we're adding, because we're multiplying y times y squared, so we add the exponents. Now we turn our attention to negative 3 times 2 is negative 6y. Then negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Then negative 3 times negative y squared is positive 3y squared. Now, we do the exact same thing. We collect like terms. We generally want to write the highest powers first. So we look. We see we have the 2y cubed here, negative 2y cubed. We don't have any more y cubed, so we write it as negative 2y cubed. We write that first. Then we look for any y squares. We have 4y squares, and we have 3y squares. So we can add those and make 7y squares. Then we have negative 8y, that's a like term with negative 6y, which is going to give you negative 14y. And then there's only one number, the 12, and he just comes along for the ride, there's nothing to add there. So you get negative 2y cubed plus 7y squared minus 14y plus 12, that's the final answer. And then we're just going to do one last problem, just to give you one more example. 2r minus s, s squared plus 4r squared, 
um, minus 4rs. Now the only thing interesting about this one is that I have a variable r and I have a variable s. And here I have variable r and s and here's r and s here. So, but you're doing exactly the same thing. Don't get scared off if you have lots of little variables. All you're going to do is take this, multiply him times each term, adding exponents where you need to, and then you'll take this and go and multiply him times each term. So, 2r times s squared is just going to be uh, 2 r s squared. You can't add exponents or anything because these are two completely different variables. So you just have to write them as they're being multiplied together. Now you have 2 r times 4 r squared, which is going to give you 2 times 4 is 8, and then it'll be r cubed because here you have an r and an r squared, so you add the exponents. Now this 2 r times this last term, 2 times negative 4, it's going to give you negative 8, and it's going to be r squared s, because I have r times r, so I add those exponents, but I still have the s, so I have to carry him through. Now I turn my attention to the next guy. Negative s times this is going to give me negative s cubed, adding the exponents. Then I take negative s times 4r squared, it'll be negative 4, um, and I'll write it as, just to make it clear, s r squared because here I have the s and I have the r squared. I can't do much with it, so I just write it down as it's multiplied together. Then the negative s times this, negative times negative, gives you positive uh, 4, and then I'll write it as r s squared, because I'm multiplying this times this, so the r is there, and then the s times the s gives you s squared right there. So I know that this looks ugly, and it is a little bit ugly, but all you have to do now is combine like terms. And remember, in order for something to be a like term, the variables and the exponents have to exactly match. That's the only way you can add things together in algebra. So we see that we have an r cubed here. We have to start somewhere, start with the highest power we see. So we have an 8r cubed. So it'd be 8r cubed. And sometimes it's nice to, to go ahead and put a dot underneath a term if you've already taken a care of it so that you don't accidentally add things two times. Then we start scanning around for the, uh, uh, the next, you know, um, there's lots of different ways you can write it, but the next highest power. But in this case we have next door we have negative 8 r squared s. Let's go ahead and write that next. And so we have negative 8 r squared s. Look at this, we have 4 r s squared uh, right here. And here we have s r squared. Now don't get confused here. This is r squared s and this is s r squared, but they're multiplied, these are multiplied together, so s times r squared is the exact same thing as r squared times s. So even though these look different, they're actually the same term. So the way that you would write that is negative 8 plus negative 4 um, gives you negative 12 r squared s, because what I did is I'm adding this term to this term, and they are like terms, because I could have written this as r squared s and it would exactly match that. Now this one's completely different. This one's a match with this one over here. So it kind of depends on how you write it down when you're doing the multiplication, but when you're combining terms, you need to make sure and look and see and make sure that these are, these are right. So here you have four, and here you have two. So then you have six. Um, well, let's go ahead and take that away. We'll have uh, six r s squared, like that. And that takes care of this term along with this term. There's only one term left, so you have negative s cubed. All right, so this is the final answer, and that's that last term right there. So you have 8r cubed minus 12r squared s plus 6rs squared minus s cubed, and this is the final answer. Now, I want to kind of stress that the order that I wrote these terms down doesn't really matter. I mean, I could have written this one first, and this one second, and this one third, and this one fourth, and it's the same thing, because none of these are like terms. We can't add any of these. These look like they might be like terms, but here's r squared, and this is not an r squared, and this is s, and this is an s squared, so these are not the same. All of the variables and all of the exponents have to completely match, or you can't add things together. So that's the final answer. Make sure you understand this. We're going to do more examples or get more practice with uh, multiplying these polynomials as we go along because we're going to be solving equations involving multiplying polynomials. And we'll be doing fractions with lots of polynomials and all kinds of things as we go down the road. So make sure you understand this and then follow me on to the next section where we'll continue building your skills.